Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Grill Outs, episode 59. I'm your host, Hollywood, Jeff Petty, and I'm joined by my illustrious co-host, Josh Colbebe. Coming at you at 4 o'clock on this Sunday, November 3rd afternoon. Yeah. He's, a, he's also an enthusiastic Paul Heyman um, yeah. <laughs> cosplayer. Yeah. yeah. Also known as the Ma- He's also known <laughs> as the maestro. So. Yeah. 27 days, Jason. <laughs> No, ja- and Jason is not with us. He is off on assignment um, somewhere else. Okay, there, there's and, and, and you know it, I feel sad. Yeah, because there's going to be certain things we're going to talk about on the show today that I know Jason that I know Jason <laughs> would enjoy, but <laughs> that will be mainly in like on this day in wrestling history. I don't yeah. know if you saw it in the rundown. I have not looked at it yet. Um, let's just say the I very first surprised. the the very first thing that we're going to talk about in that will be. Uh, Jason would have enjoyed it oh. immensely. He, I think he's going <laughs> to when he goes and listens to the show. But 27. yeah, um, you're you're on twenty seven days as as champion till till something happens. Until we, well, full <laughs> gear is our next predictions. Yeah. We would have done uh, predictions for WWE Crown Jewel, but due to some scheduling things, and also I really wanted to to talk about you know. What you had uncovered, what the the you know the the lineage of the title that you yeah. had put together. So that's, I really, that's right. I really wanted to get into that. Yeah. And just since we're already talking about Crown Jewel, it just finished up. Um, we're recording this on Saturday, so Saturday. It, so this it just finished up a couple of hours ago. I think actually an hour ago. Um, right now, Liv Morgan and Cody Rhodes are your first. Male and female crown jewel champions. Oh my! Yes, they get a ring. They do. It's they, big. They they don't get the belts though. It's huge. It, have have they have they unveiled the ring or they just um, announced that they were doing a ring? I I think in the post show thing they were going to do some kind of special presentation. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, but yeah. Okay, all right. Because them big old belts are staying over in Saudi at the WWE Experience attraction, which looks really cool. But you know. Yeah, I did not know that was a yeah. thing yeah. until you you just told me this a few yeah. minutes before we before we opened the mics up. Yeah. So, could you explain a little more about like the uh, the WWE experience over there, or just what you've seen? Um, I know they have like some kind of Undertaker themed maze. They, oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, I think they have like just kind of different exhibits and whatnot. Um, I don't know what all is in there. I think there might even be a roller coaster. I could be wrong on that, but <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, just a big WWE themed attraction. Oh, okay. Like I guess a mini amusement park. It's just WWE. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, and, and and they did the uh, sort of a pre-show type deal mm-hmm. Friday with. with at Saudi I think that was actually from the WWE experience. Like one of the things in there. Okay. All right. It ma- makes sense. Makes sense. And that's where Triple H did announce they will not take the championship belts home. They will stay there. Um, and they will receive a ring, and pretty much they just want to see over the years how many rings certain superstars can yeah. rack up. Um, Which kind of makes sense because they're not really defending the title unless by chance they happen to be the champion again at this time. True. Next year. True. Um, I want. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to do that. Like, I mean, I, well, I guess it depends on if you're still holding the yeah. world heavyweight or WWE undisputed title, mm-hmm. you know, respectively, up to this point. So yeah, I, I, I guess I could see it at that point. Interesting thing from that from that sort of press conference type thing that was happening. <laughs> um, they started chanting for WrestleMania, <laughs> and uh, Triple H he shut that down real yeah. quick. He's like, "We ain't no, it will be in Las Vegas." <laughs> I don't think he wants to bring it to Saudi Arabia. Nope. I think honestly, the only way they will 
they they'll take it to London, but it seems like that they're it's not going to go to London now. Yeah, um, because it looks like London may be getting the Super Bowl. Is it me or did Triple H kind of seem not crazy enthusiastic during that uh, press conference? Yeah, he he didn't. He probably doesn't want to do his Saudi shows anymore. <laughs> I was going to say I don't think I don't he he Triple H approaches WWE. And in the wrestling business, much much differently than Vince did. Mm-hmm. Um, I there are some similarities, um, and I think that's just from being years of being around Vince, being in the system, being his son in law. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you, you're going to pick up on certain things, but yeah, I don't think he's too enthused about this. Um, he's probably just going through the motion and yeah, he's stuck in a deal. So. Yeah, I mean that, that deal was it's what for uh, ten years, I think. Ten, I think. Either one year, or like a half year, got added because of COVID. Okay, yeah. see that, and that makes sense because yeah, they, yeah they, there was no traveling around yeah. that time. So, and they and pretty much Saudi Arabia is guaranteed two shows a year. Mm-hmm. So, um, this is just something that you know, I, yeah. I mean, it is what yeah, it they is. Always, they always got like a, a springish show, which always changes every year. Then they got Crown Jewel always at this time. Yeah, yeah. So. We'll uh, see in spring what they have. But as far as the show itself went, yeah, uh, Cody Rhodes did beat Gunther via roll-up to become the first male crown jewel champion. L.A. Knight defeated Andrade yeah. and Carmelo Hayes. I should have paused there for a second so you get your <laughs> yeah out. Um, as far as Randy Orton and Kevin Owens goes, it was a no contest because the match never got a chance to get started. They just pretty much started brawling before the bell even rang, and it never rang, so the match was never made official. Um, like I said, Liv Morgan did defeat Nia Jax to become the first women's uh, crown jewel champion. Um, Seth Rollins did defeat Bronson Reed, um, but after the match, Bronson Reed got back up, pretty much sig- sig- signaling that the beast is not done and the possibility of this feud continuing is it's it's going to continue. Yeah. Um, uh, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill both. Uh, they retained their WWE Women's Tag Team titles. And then the new bloodline defeated the OG bloodline. Sammy came out to save Roman and company from a beatdown, only to accidentally strike Roman, furthering tensions. So mm. nobody knows which side Sammy is truly on. Yeah. Um. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Actually, I think Sammy was a part of the match. So, yeah. Anyway. There's there's tension still going on between Sammy and them and, and whatnot. Mm. Yeah, I don't know, uh, but that is everything as well, far. I don't think he was part of the match. Maybe he came out during the match, but he wasn't like in the match. He wasn't in the match. No. Okay, it, it right. was a uh, Roman and the Usos facing Solo, uh, Jacob Fatu and Tamatanga. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Um, or well, maybe maybe I re- I think I maybe I misread it. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm scrolling up. I'm scrolling up. I'm scrolling up. Yeah, I, I I've yeah I did not watch it. <laughs> um, full disclosure, I just did yeah. it. Um, well that, that not not just did it. I I had other work things to do, and and Josh oh, yeah. had had work things to do. So, um, so yeah, this is this is just what happens. We we have to brush up on. It. I was follow following along loosely, but. Yeah. And just to stick with WWE, they did announce this week WWE ID, which ID. is which is from my understanding of it. This is what I have wrote down. WWE has announced a new recruiting tool for them that is similar to WWE's NIL program. It is being called WWE ID. ID meaning independent wrestling. Um it is a way for local independent wrestlers to get uh, for, in order for them to get to WWE faster. Apparently, WWE has 20 wrestlers signed to WWE ID as of right now. Just lost three. Just lost three. We'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, later. Lord. <laughs> um, we, don't know, uh, we don't know exactly who they are. Um, uh, me, personally, I believe that this will be a more efficient way for wrestlers to get signed by WWE. WWE. I think it is a much better approach than the old ways of finding someone who looks like a wrestler and trying to make them into a professional wrestler. Um, by doing this, you're going, you're getting real professional wrestlers and not people who look the part. Yeah. Um, my fear, though, and I don't think I'm in the minority with this, um, is that this will hurt the independent scene like NXT UK did to the UK independent scene. And my only hope for this is that they learned from their mistakes with that. Yeah, and no, I, I, it. Yes, and I also kind of look at it as like, well, NXT UK was also under Vince, technically. True. And it's a different time now with Triple H, and he has a bit more respect on some things. 
Yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. Like he, he. It's, that's what I mean. Like we, when we were talking yeah. about the crown jewel stuff, he he approaches it much different than Vince does. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like I'm hoping that they learn from their mistakes because before NXT UK became a thing, the UK independent scene was. I mean, it was thriving. Mm-hmm. It was booming over there, and then NXT UK comes in, and they. If correct me if I'm wrong, and, and if memory serves me correct, they made it seem like that they were going to work with promotions or something. They actually did at the beginning. Uh, that, yeah, and then eventually it just became, yeah. you know. I, I, well, I think one of the issues that kind of soured him is, um, I believe, whoever the UK champion was at the time, they went to another promotion, and someone from that promotion like, actually stomped on the UK title. Ah. Oh. So that might have, you know, soured some things there. Yeah. <laughs> but they, then again, that was also yeah. under an old old regime. We yeah. got a whole new regime now. So, um, yeah, like I said, they got 20 wrestlers. That they have signed to it. We don't know who they are. Yeah. They're teasing them a little bit. They did they did mention uh like what promotions are already like part of this deal or whatever. It's mostly um the first ones they announced are basically those like current WWE wrestlers who run schools. Like Seth Rollins, for example. Okay. See that and that one makes sense. And I, then I'm assuming like Booker T's school yeah, yeah. is involved in mm-hmm. that. Um because there was a was it was it a member? It was a member of the of the Anawahi family that he was trying to get. Mm, yeah. uh, I think Zilla thought too. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was trying to get him in mm. with WWE. So with this, it only makes sense why this has even become a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. Like, there's still a lot of murky details on this. I don't know if they are going. I'm gonna go ahead and open the link. I don't know if this is going to be like a yearly thing, like, you know, hey, we got 20 wrestlers every year, or like this is just, or we're going to start off with 20 mm. and then expand to 30 and 40. They're not really all that clear about this. Yeah. This is actually, I'm, I pulled up this straight from WWE's website, and this is what it says about ID. And actually, ID stands for Independent Development. My apologies on that. Um, WWE. Identification. <laughs> yeah, D- <laughs> WWE is designed to provide independent wrestlers a clear pathway to a potential career in WWE. Following the success of WWE's NIL program, and it's next in line, which is a program that was aimed at like college athletes. Yeah, I, I don't. And it has has there been any that really come out of that? Maybe one or two. Mm, I don't. I, I, the only ones I can think of might actually still be at the Performance Center, not NXT yet. I don't know if Obafemi was one of those. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Was Gable Stevenson one of them? I think he was. Yeah, and but well, that didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, WWE ID has been constructed to support independent wrestling prospects and schools with world class training, development, and mentorship. In turn, raising the profit and of and strengthening the independent wrestling ecosystem, WWE will provide the most prominent independent wrestling schools in the U.S. with the WWE ID official designation, with the goal of guiding new trainees and existing talent at these select institutions with enhanced development opportunities. WWE ID will, will identify the top independent wrestling prospects with an official WWE ID prospect designation and support their developmental journey. WWE ID will give fans the opportunity to follow the paths of these standout prospects on the independent wrestling scene through curated behind-the-scenes content as well as highlights and matches showcased across WWE's social platforms. So, that's coming straight from WWE's mouth. That is, yeah, that is on their website under recruit. Uh, And I have a list of the schools right here in front Mm -hmm. of me. So uh, we have Reality of Wrestling. I believe, yeah. Yep, that's Booker T's. Elite Pro Wrestling Training Center. Um, That is led by coaches Mike Hollow and Scott Reed. The Nightmare Factory, Mm. Cody Rhodes. Uh, Knox Pro Entertainment and Academy, um, Rikishi, mm. Black and Brave Wrestling Academy. That is Seth Rollins. So those those are the first ones that are on this deal. Yeah, those are those are the first five uh, schools. Yeah, 
that are on this WWE ID deal. Um, I will be very interested to see how far out they go with this. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they pick up the Fi Wrestling. Maybe they come here to West Virginia. I'd, I'd be interested to see that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would. I would be very interested to mm-hmm. see which promotions in this state they would pick, because as to what we point out on here a lot, there is a lot of independent wrestling promotions in this state. Yeah, yeah, like I, I, there is a surprising number. There's, of, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, go support independent wrestling, even if they don't have the WWE ID tag. Mm-hmm. Go support independent wrestling. Yeah, like they, yeah, it's 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 like when people say go support your mom and pop shops, go support your local mom and pop wrestling promotions. So yeah. But that's everything for WWE ID. Um, shifting gears real quick, NXT will be at the 2300 Arena this upcoming Wednesday. Due to the U.S. election this uh, upcoming Tuesday, WWE NXT will instead be held on Wednesday, November 6th at the 2300 Arena, which is the historic ECW Arena in Philadelphia, ECW. Pennsylvania. This positions uh, NXT this week directly against AEW Dynamite. Yeah. Um, which is the ongoing saga between them. Yeah, they, they recently went head-to-head, but it was on that title Tuesday that Dynamite did. Yeah. But it was only an hour because they started at 9 instead of right at 8. But in it, who, who's? Uh, Dynamite. Did Dynam- AEW. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And I don't uh, think there are any time changes for this. So I think they're going to be directly for that two hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's uh, uh they did they did kind of tease this here recently. And RVD's going to be there. RVD's going to be there. Bully Ray, yeah. I think it's also going to be there. Francine, so. Francine's going to be yeah. there. Oh wow! At least I saw a thing about her. Oh well, you know what? I, I, it's going to be interesting. You know they're going to outside of those three. You know there's. I think there's going to be more to pop up. Yeah. Um. Hey man. Maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if Sandman's going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that would uh, that would be that'd be rather rather interesting if he did. Um, um, but just sticking with AEW real quick, there are new AEW Tag Team Champions. Yeah, after facing the Young Bucks for the AEW Tag Team Titles this past week on Fright Night Dynamite, which by the way looked really cool. Yeah. I always like when it doesn't not not. Not just AEW, but just wrestling sets in general. I like when they have the Christmas stuff or mm-hmm. the Halloween stuff mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, anyway, Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn are your new AEW Tag Finally. Team Champions. Yes, making this their first championship wins in AEW since joining the promotion in 2019 as part of the inaugural signees of the company. Yeah, back in business. So to anybody out there saying the Young Bucks won't do the job, yeah, they did the job. <laughs> they jobbed out to him. But it's also, it's it's uh, apparently the Young Bucks, uh, they're going to go away for a little bit. Yeah. And then I guess they're eventually going to make their way back um, to help clean yeah, AEW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, because John Moxley and them are running roughshod over AEW right now. Um, maybe the Hurt Syndicate will clean it up. Maybe. Yeah, or Bobby maybe. Lashley a dub now. He did. Uh, Bobby Lashley did finally mm-hmm. debut this past week on AEW yeah. Dynamite Fright Night. So Apparently he's been actually signed since September, and then they just finally debuted him to, uh, this past Wednesday. Yeah, well, they, uh, timing. Yeah. you got to get the timing right. Uh, they, I guess they had thought of debuting him at, uh, I think, Wrestle Dream. But they had a couple of other returns, and they didn't want to overshadow those. So. True, true. Yeah. yeah. So now the Hurt Synd- Syndicate is what they're being called Formerly now. the business. Formerly uh, the Hurt business are in AEW. Yeah. Um. So that's going on. There is some talks, just because I'm a Kenny Omega fan, I'm bringing this up. <laughs> there has been uh, some rumblings that Mr. Omega might be making his way Ooh, nice. towards back towards a return to AEW, and there's even talks. This is rumors. I, know, I don't have this on the sheet. This is just, I'm oh. coming off the top of my head right <laughs> now. Um, that they that Kenny is supposed to come back, and they're going to build to Omega Okada 5. Hmm. So, we're, we, we will we will see. Um, I guess, you know who's not coming back? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we will end this segment before we go to On This Day in Wrestling History with some rather sad news. Is Mark, it sad? It, <laughs> no, it is. It is. What he what he wrote was rather. Mm. It was heartfelt. I'll yeah. say that. 
Marco Stunt announces his retirement from wrestling via Twitter, um, or X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he put in there to quote to my fans, friends, and the wrestling community. Today, I write this with a heavy yet grateful heart as I announce my retirement from professional wrestling. This decision was not an easy one, as wrestling has been the biggest part of my life for so long. Filled with moments that have shaped who I am today, it has been an incredible journey, one full of passion, sweat, tears, and unrivaled joy. End quote. He goes on to thank uh, Brett Lauderdale and GCW for his start in wrestling, along with the EW for the time he spent in both promotions. Um, he also thanked thanked all of the wrestlers he shared a ring with and the fans for their continued support. So, Marco Stunt has officially retired from professional wrestling. He's done, he just is. like Baron Corbin, Indy Hartwell, and Tegan Knox. Yes, that was that's also another thing. They were released yeah. yesterday. Uh, Tegan and Indy were Corbin's contract expired. Okay. They didn't resign him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that uh, was the three I was referring to earlier. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, again, my mind, I don't know. Um, which was weird enough about Indy Hartwell because she was on the taped episode of SmackDown. Yeah, and te- yeah it's, she was fired that day and she ended up, she was still on the taped episode. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I guess when it was announced that she was being released, uh, she was on Twitter and she's like, wait, what? So, yeah. but... Then Sean Ross Sapp on uh, Fightful was like, no, she knew. She knew that she was being released, so I think maybe she was trying to keep an air of uh, kayfabe at that eh, point. Yeah. But we all know that the episode was taped anyway, or yeah. at least most of us knew, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, but, and, and, and last thing, Goldberg apparently is going to have a retirement match in 2025. Apparently. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Um, I don't know what where this is coming from. It just came across uh, my timeline today. They, have, they semi-teased a little thing between him and Gunther recently, so eh, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Um, I'll be honest. I'm not, mm, <laughs> I'm not excited about yeah. that, but that's me. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's people that, you know, that are, would be excited to see Goldberg one more time in the ring. And I'm I'm not really one of them, so yeah. <laughs> I'll just I'll just leave it at that. Um, but we can go ahead and stop it right there. And now we have on this day in wrestling history. On this day, November third. 1998, in one of the greatest upsets in American political history, huh. Jesse the Body Ventura was elected as governor of Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, I put, and I threw that in there simply because, yeah, the election is on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, if you haven't voted, go vote. November 3rd, 2001. WWF Rebellion, a UK-only pay-per-view, took place at the MEN Arena. Oh, that was men. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pronounced M E N, but it's it's cap it's the all capitalized man. men uh, <laughs> in Manchester, England. In the main event, Steve Austin retained the WWF Championship against The Rock. Yeah, at that time they had uh, UK exclusive paper. They only aired on pay per view in the UK. They didn't air anywhere else. Yeah, and I think eventually they they were like DVD releases yeah. in the states, mm-hmm. and you could get them um, because they had Rebellion and they had Insurrection. Yeah, so. Um, those were the two big UK. Uh, the very first one was actually No Mercy, and then they later that same year they made it a US pay per view or worldwide, I should say. Maybe it was maybe it was just a good hit. Or, yeah. or Vince was like, "Ha ha, pal, I like that name." <laughs> <laughs> I have a horrible Vince impression. <laughs> All right, just to wrap this up, a uh, November third, Steel Cage. <laughs> 2008, in a steel cage match on Raw, Chris Jericho defeated Batista to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Now, I don't know if this is the same match where Batista got in trouble for blading. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Apparently, I don't know. I, I I didn't... I don't think it is. I don't think it is. But apparently there was a match. Maybe it was in 2009. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, that is everything for On This Day in Wrestling History. We're going to go ahead and take a break right there. And when we return, we have the PWI Women's 250. 250. Stay tuned. 
time for more of the grill out. Here's Hollywood Jeff Payne. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to The Grill Out. I'm your host, Hollywood, Jeff Petty, and I'm joined by the reigning and defending undisputed Grill Out Heavyweight Predictions Champion, the maestro, Josh Cole. Bye-bye. 27 days. <laughs> and counting. And count. He Listen, there's a reason why we Actually, call Actually, it'll be 26 days when this goes live. What? What? Yeah. Twenty oh twenty six 26 days until you beat the record? Yeah. Oh. See, I, I, was, I, I was counting 27 from today, I think. Yeah, but we, this won't go live until yeah. Sunday. Yeah. But then if they're, li- if they're listening to this on Monday. 25 days. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this on 1490 a.m. Four days. <laughs> WSWW, thank you uh, for listening to us. You can email us, thegrillout95 at gmail.com. You can also go like the Facebook page. Facebook.com forward slash the grill out. Um go like the Facebook page. We do we we've been we've been a little more active yeah, on that. It's spicy. Yes, we have. Um but one thing that we do like to talk about on this show is rankings. One th- and and it, we we've done it before. We we did it last year. We did the PWI five hundred and the PWI women's two fifty. This year we've are already done the PWI five hundred, so now we'll do the women's two fifty. Yeah. So, I still don't get those oranges. Uh, what? Tony Storm. Oh yeah, I don't know. I I don't know either. Don't. Uh, yep. Yeah. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about, but I ain't going there. All right. So, uh, this past a couple weeks ago, actually, I think it was when we didn't have an episode out. Yeah. Um, that was when this came out. So I just we, we're just revisiting it. Um, the PWI Women's 250 uh, was released a couple of weeks ago. Now, the criteria for this uh, to rank the women wrestlers uh, are in-ring achievement, influence, technical ability, competition, and activity. The rankings are based on the performance of women wrestlers from October 1st, 2023 to September 30th, 2024. Wrestlers must have wrestled in at least 10 singles matches to be eligible for the rankings. And right here, I have it. like fr- a low number. Yeah, like, because you, I, I mean, I guess you could, like, They're do trying that. To, me, try and make it so they include Roman Reigns. <laughs> 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 like, for the men's side, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Um, But I guess you could technically wrestle an average of, like, 0. .7 matches every month. That's just rough math. Like, 0. .75 matches a month. You're not going to wrestle three quarters of a match, but follow me on this. You could wrestle 10 matches in a year and still not make the 250 because you didn't, you know, score high enough in the other categories. But they are including people who have only had 10 matches. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe if you came back for a match or two, you're not consi- you, you you may have a lot of influence, you may have great ability, but you you didn't meet that criteria of 10 matches, so we're not going to include you. You sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Making me cough, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess that's what they're saying to him. But right here, I have the 250 in that's front right of me. That's right, accounting. <laughs> what? what? What is it? I don't know why. Between 169 and 170, says, oh, oh, her nasty what happened. Taryn from accounting. That's uh, what? <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know who Taryn from accounting is, but we're about to find out. Okay, I'll go ahead and give the top 10. Um, Number one, rightfully so, is Tony Storm. Tony Storm has been on fire the past year with the yeah. timeless gimmick. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it is so great. Like when she went to Mexico, <laughs> they took the <laughs> pictures of her, posted it. Well, I think it was CMLL, uh-huh. um, and they posted it on on their on their socials. And everything else is in color, yeah. But Tony, <laughs> <laughs> Tony's still in black and white. I love the gimmick. Um, she's a phenomenal wrestler, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, has had a lot of influence in w- in AEW and has pretty much carried that division yeah. the past year. Um, she had a wonderful match at uh, All In against Mariah May. So I have zero problem with with Tony Storm being number one. Yeah. Um, uh, behind her will be Jordan Grace at number two. The cur- uh, she's still the current TNA knockout. No, champion. she just lost it at their most recent event. Okay, okay, that's I I, I thought so, but yeah. um. Yeah, Jordan Grace from TNA, and then it goes Rhea Ripley at number three. 
At first, I would have thought maybe put Rhea Ripley like maybe at two, but now I think about it, she actually hasn't had a whole lot of matches this year. Yeah, she was out for injury. Yeah, but she's is out it, again. I was going to say she has an or, uh, a fractured orbital. Yeah, bone from it, it's actually a legit injury, but they did a story angle on it to write her off. Okay, they sort well. I, am I using the correct term? They pilmonized her. Is that what it is? Sh- sure. Yeah, I think I think I don't <laughs> know. I think I, yeah yeah I think I, yeah they pilmonized her. Anyway, I don't know. Um, Rhea Ripley at number three. Number four is Micah from uh, Stardom. Mm. Yep, uh, Joshi wrestler. Uh, number five is Stephanie Vacker. In NXT now. Yep. And then we have number six, Saray. Um, she was with NXT. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's not, she's not with NXT anymore. Um, I think she... I have it pulled up right here. Where is she at now? Uh, yeah, she was last with NXT, but she's... I don't know exactly which promotion she's went to, but she has left WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, number seven is Bailey. Number eight, Willow Nightingale. Number nine, Mariah May. And then number 10, Athena. Hmm. Which, Athena has quietly become uh, the, the, the the Tony Storm of Ring of Honor, pretty much. Yeah. And what I mean by that is she is carrying that division over there. So I was looking up Saray. Um, according to her Wikipedia, she is currently a freelancer who performs under, the, well, yeah, under Arena Saray. So she's, I guess, just wrestling wherever. Okay, yeah, she's she, free agent pretty much. She yeah. hasn't signed any promotion. She yeah. just um, probably just deal by deal with, you know, whatever promotion is willing to yeah, book like, her. She's recently done uh, Suk- Sukabon, Sukibon, uh, Stardom, uh, Marigold. Yeah, just different stuff. Okay, she just Yeah, she was released around. from WWE, or I think she was released in 2023, so. Okay, yeah, I, kn- I knew she hadn't, she hadn't been with WWE for a while. Yeah. Like it had been a minute since she was there. Um, number 11 is Roxanne Perez. Number 12, Liv Morgan. Mm. 13, Io Sky. Number 14, Mayu Iwatani. Um, number 15, Masha Slamovich. Uh, number 16, Mina Shirakawa. Mm. 17, Becky Lynch. Uh, number 19, Mayu Watanabe. Uh, number 19, Mayu Yamashita. And then number 20 is Lyra Val- Valkyria. So that is your top 20 so far. Okay. Uh, number 21 is Julia, followed She's by... Now in NXT as well. Yeah, in NXT. Followed by Nia Jax. She has had a pretty good year. Yeah, she has. She's really improved. Yeah. Like, I know we've we've joked on the yeah. show about Nia Jax, but she really, truly has improved her in-ring skills. She did not injure Liv Morgan. That's true. She did not... <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that's a plus. Yeah. That's a plus. Um... So Nia, yeah, Nia Jax, Danny Luna, uh, Kenzie Page. I think that's supposed to say Riho. Says probably. No, no, Ryo. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Julia Hart. That's interesting. She hasn't been on in a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soya. I don't. I can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. Soya and 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 new. Yeah, yeah, I know. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Tam Tam Nakano. Uh, Kalani Jordan, Naomi, and then Hikaru Shida is 31. Kalani Jordan was the inaugural NXT Women's North American Champion. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I want to know who Tyron from accounting is. <laughs> well, she's from accounting. No, uh, yeah. I, you know, I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather be from accounting than than uh, human resources. So. Yeah. Um, okay, she is most known for wrestling in real Canadian wrestling. Uh, it's real. <laughs> you want to know what the name of her of her uh, finisher is? What? Death and Taxes. Eh, <laughs> that's good. That is good. That is good. Uh, okay. Well, where's IRS when you need them? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, did we also did we overlook Taryn from accounting last year because she was ranked 153 last year? I guess so. Uh, we must have. We were distracted by Tyrus. Oh, uh, we were. <laughs> by the way, uh, Jason sends in the group chat. <laughs> he finds Tyrus on screen, <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to say what he said, but uh, <laughs> he was. Uh, I'll say he was pleasantly su- surprised to see Tyrus yeah. on his screen uh, yeah. wherever he was. He's off on location. We don't know where he's at. He doesn't tell us anything. Um, but Taryn from accounting is 169. I think he's herding sheep. Yeah, yeah he may be. <laughs> you know, I, it doesn't shock me. Nothing shocks me with him 
All right. Uh, let's see. Danny Mo, who is a local around here. Yeah. Uh, well, lo- she she wrestles for a lot of the local promotions. She's part of the Neon Blondes. Yes, with a facade, the Neon Ninja. Um, she wrestles frequently with uh, Pro Wrestling Conquest. Um, and I think uh, with All Star Wrestling a little bit. Um, but I I do know I do see her around here quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, last year she was ranked. Uh, she actually went up this year. Last year she was one forty seven. Um, this year she's one oh nine. Hmm. So good on Danny. Um, let's see. How is Tegan Knox ranked that high? She hasn't wrestled in a while. Yeah, I saw that. She I, just got released. Where where where's she? One seventy eight. One seventy eight. Yeah, that doesn't make no sense. See, we've also we have talked about these before. Um like when we were talking about them last year, is sometimes the rankings are, I don't know where their heads are. I think what happens is like the top 10 get highly debated on who the top 10 should be, mm. maybe even the top 20 or 30. But then after that, it's just pretty much everybody's just kind of filling in the blank. Um, uh, Lady Frost is 191. Bozilla. Bozilla. Where's that? <laughs> 75. Right after Oscar. 75? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, t- 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 oh, she does a Vader splash. Mm. And she's German. Oh. Okay. So, birthplace Hanover. Um, wow. Okay. Her, she was trained in the k Dojo with Scott Demore. Huh. So, yeah. Debuted in March 4th, 2022. So, Bozilla. Um, and this is her first time being... Ranked so hmm. good on her. Uh, Jody Threat, who is this current TNA Knockouts World Tag Team Champion? So, okay, um, let's see, and we just have a little bit of fun with this. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. Um, hmm. we're gonna see if there's any that I recognize off the top of my head. Um, Natalia is 100. Natalia is 100? Yeah. Okay. Um, Ram Kachow, uh, DDT, Ice Ribbon. Um, she is ranked. She actually dropped in rank from last year. She was 214. Now she's 224. Um, you! 111. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Japanese professional wrestler. Um, let's see. Was ranked... 35 last year. Hmm. Dropped to 111 this year. Oh, wow. Debuted in January 4th, 2016. You did worse. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, nickname's Dramatic Dream Fighter. Okay, cool. Chelsea Green. Hmm. 112. Hmm. Uh, Serena Deeb. 113. Um, Flammer. Or Flamer. Flamer. Where's that up? 119. Oh. Ah, it's a luchador. Oh. Okay, well, luchador. Um, she is the daughter of Red Flamer. I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Zones. Zones. What? 242. 240. Oh, all capital letters. Zones. <laughs> um, she currently wrestles in Evolution Joshi Pro Wrestling. Alice Crowley. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. 236. 236. Oh, Alice Crowley. Cool. Uh, American professional wrestler. Uh, trained by Randy West. Birthplace, Indianapolis, Indiana. Debuted November 22nd, 2018. Hmm. Um, former IWA Mid-South Tag Team Champion with Becky Idol. Two-time IWA Women's Champion. Hmm. So, let's see. Uh... First year being in the ranks. Okay. Uh, Wendy Chu. She is ranked... Well, I, I missed it. Where is it? 221. So she's she's 221 on that one. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Free of the Slayer. 163. 163. Freya the Slayer. Nicknames Queen of the North. Uh... Three time OVW women's champion. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's why it kinda sounds familiar. I think she was on a Netflix show. 
Oh, okay. The one that you talked about a few mm-hmm. weeks ago? Yeah. Okay. Actually, it was a while ago. Was it? Yeah. Oh. You yeah. know what? Things just run together after a while. <laughs> they really do. Can I'll say this. Can you believe we got 59 episodes now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Oh, Lord. I know. We're getting up there in episode Sex numbers. Sexy Star 2. What? what? 128. A sexy Star 2? Yeah. Dose. The Dose. Not the Nuebe, like Chris Jericho. No. Not exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh... Last year she was ranked 221. Mm-hmm. This year 128 moved up in rankings. Moving okay. on up. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and yes, from Baja California, Mexico. Tessa Blanchard, she's still there. <laughs> Where? Where? 155. I'm just, I'm just saying in general. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I got a lot of questions now. What? Where has she wrestled? Uh, places. It's like just random independent places, I think. Ah, uh, okay. It, on this, which is the prowrestling.fandom.com, they don't have her anywhere. Yeah, I don't think she's signed. I don't think he wants to sign her. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of kind of get it after uh, what happened yeah. in uh, Impact Wrestling. Oh, um, that and just, uh, she's just not a great person. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> all the controversy that just surrounds her in general. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't, like, yeah, I don't... Uh, uh, yeah, we can say that. I don't ever expect <laughs> Tessa Blanchard to be on this show. Um, yeah. Which, after everything that's went on, I don't know if I would want that on my show. Yeah. Want her on my show. Yeah. On our show. Um, let's see. Yes, 155. Okay, so if the criteria is is that you had have to have at least tw- at least 10 matches. Between October 1st, 2023 and September 30th, 2024. Again, you can email us to grillout95 at gmail.com <laughs> or message us on the Facebook page. Where has Tessa Blanchard wrestled? I remember seeing a video semi recently, some random independent promotion that got in front of just had a kind of a not so happy face. <laughs> I, I, I kind of get it. Like mm-hmm. right here, you got Lash Legend uh, from WWE. Okay, and where 167 is where she's ranked. Why is Tessa Blanchard ranked higher? Yeah, and we and we had these same conversations last year with the PWI 500 about Tyrus, why he was ranked so much higher than other people. Now, granted, Tessa is a good wrestler, but absolutely <laughs> got got great skills. Yeah, um, I mean, look who her dad is, but again, look at all this all the controversy that surrounds her. Yeah. So. You know, again, I don't know why she's 155. Uh, Diamante is 154. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm, yeah. And yeah, and Tegan Knox being, being, ra- being even ranked. I don't know why Tegan Knox and Tessa Blanchard are even ranked. Yeah. Like, Lady Frost makes sense to me. You still see her. Rachel Ellering makes sense to me. Um, Aja, Aja Kong. I guess Aja Kong still wrestles. Hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I guess she does. Um, so she's ranked 214. Uh, to, to, to Ram Kachow, 224. I already said that. I, yeah. Katie Arquette, 232. Hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Some of these don't make sense. Yeah, um, yeah I, 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 I do not have a clue. About some of these. Um, let's see. We'll go. Anna J, 93. Lola Vice, 95. Anna J has improved a lot. She has. D- that excursion she did to uh, to Japan. Yeah. Great. Especially her, her foot movement. It greatly improved that. Mm-hmm. So, again, they, they always say that if you want to learn how to work, go to Japan. And, it's, <laughs> and right there, Anna J just proved that sentiment all over again. Um Last one, uh, Session Moth Martina. Hmm. Irish female wrestler. Okay. Does a code breaker. Huh. And a satellite DDT. Wow. Um, I'm not going to say what her other finisher is. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say that. Um, Ali Catch is 82. Marina Shafir, 81. Maxi Impaler, 59. Uh, Maki Ito, 69. 
uh, Thunder Rosa, 65. Utami Hayashishita, uh, 64. Azumi, 63. Max the Impaler, 59. Sky Blue, 54. Red Velvet, 51. I'm surprised she's that high. I know. Jade Cargill is 44. Huh. Um, Bianca Belair is 34. Billy Starks, 33. Tiffany Stratton, 32. Chris Statlander, 36. Uh, Billy Starks is only like 20. Yeah. But she, I mean, she she does good work. Does good work. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to, go go pick up uh, the Pro Wrestling Illustrated uh Wherever you can find your magazines or order it offline. They're not um, a sponsor. Yeah, they're not. Um, we just like to talk about yeah. it. Uh, yeah, critique it a little bit. Um, most of these I would say that I probably would agree with. The Tessa Blanchard one does makes zero sense to me. Um, and Tegan Knotts, Knox, sorry that she just got released. But again, I, I don't know if the criteria is that you have to have at least 10 matches. What 10 matches have you had? So. And if you know yeah. this, email us, let us know, the grail at 95 at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. But we did talk about a lot of independent wrestlers in that. Yeah. So, speaking of that, we're going to go ahead and shift gears real quick before we take the break. And we're going to talk about the main event. It looks like all the talking has been done. It's time for the main event. All right, this is the main event where we go ahead and let you know what your upcoming week of professional wrestling is going to look like nationally, internationally, and locally. As far as internationally and nationally, as what we've already said, November 6th will be NXT at the 2300 Arena. They will be at the famous ECW Arena this upcoming Wednesday. Wednesday. November 6th. Yes, going head-to-head with AEW Dynamite this upcoming Wednesday. Um, Other than that, um, television professional wrestling is pretty much uh, your regularly scheduled programming this week. Um, November 8th will be NJPW Fighting Spirit Unleashed. So just throwing that one out. Yeah. There. And switching over to locally, um, there is a lighter weekend of shows compared to how what, what it usually is. Um, yeah. Usually when Joshua is in, it extends, gives <laughs> us another page. Yeah. Uh, so our, our rundown sheet usually is about five pages once we're done, yeah. putting in everything that we want to put in. Um, this time, it's it, we gotta, it's, it's not as bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Route 33 Wrestling returns to action in Spencer, West Virginia at the Armory on Main Street. Bell time is at 7 o'clock and tickets are $15 while kids five and under get in free with a paying adult. It's on Main Street, not that other street. Yeah, Main Street. Not, not the non-Main Street, not that side character. No, yeah, we, we main character, <laughs> Main Street in Spencer, West Virginia, um, yeah. this upcoming Saturday, November 9th. Um, the Deathmatch-based promotion Negative Outlook Wrestling will present Aftermath. At 123 Pleasant Street in Morgantown, West Virginia. This is an 18 plus show only. So you got to be at least 18 years. That's old. right, kiddies. Not for you. Yeah, kiddos, y'all can't go to this. Uh, you probably do have to show an ID to show that you are at least 18 years old to enter this event. Um, the show will start at 9 o'clock and it's $20 for advanced tickets and $25 at the door. So if you want to go early, um, you could probably contact them, Negative Outlook Wrestling, wherever their socials are, and you could probably get tickets. Uh, I know they're on Instagram. Okay, so yeah, you could probably hit them up on Instagram, maybe let them know, ask them where you could get early tickets, so um, yeah, it, or if not, it'll be $25 at the door. There will also be live music from hardcore bands, so um, again, 18 plus. If you're under the age of 18, you cannot go to this show. Yeah. World Domination Wrestling Alliance will be in action for Vendetta at the Bennington Volunteer Fire Department in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Bell time is 6.15 p.m. and tickets are $20. It's not V for Vendetta. I've never seen that movie. You've never seen V for Vendetta? I have not. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed right now. That's one of my favorite movies. Oh. Um. Yeah, especially on November fifth, and uh, this week is Ivy's birthday. So, oh. yeah, happy birthday, baby! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be listening. It's like, why are you doing that? <laughs> uh, shout out to Real Shoot Wrestling, which often does shows here in West Virginia, as they will be making a trip to Parma, Ohio, to present "Caught in a Glimpse" at the American Legion Post. 703. Best of luck to the wrestlers of, of RSW and safe travels. If you happen to want to travel there, it's like a three-hour drive, just an FYI. Or yeah. maybe four hours, something like that. Yeah. It's, it's up there. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 
you'll get there in a few hours, but you might if you might want to get an Airbnb or something. Yeah, I, I know people that have <laughs> drove three hours to things just to mm. drive three hours back in the same day. That's insane to me. <laughs> I, I have actually done it. Granted, it was a festival, music festival. Yeah, yeah. but and I will say this real quick before we close this out. I did mention Ivy. Okay, just know. Happy we, birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. But last uh, week we were at a at a Halloween thing, and we had uh, people. These 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 two people were dressed up as Sting and Hulk Hogan, respectively. And uh, just know that she was hustling to get the name of the to get the name of the podcast out there. So <laughs> she was telling them, "Hey, go out, subscribe to this, listen to it." So yeah, if you are Sting or Hulk Hogan, Sting. if you are Kent Sting or Hulk Hogan <laughs> that we met um, at the Halloween party, hi, this is your shout out, and uh, thank you, Ivy, baby, for uh, for giving a shout out for the show. Speaking of Sting, we need to get Stang on here. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Stang and. Uh, Gain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to close it out there. One take of them a- is more likely than the other. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to take a break right here. Going to go ahead and close it up. And then when we come back, we're just going to wrap up the show. So stay with us. Stay tuned. Stay here. Yeah. Once again, here's Hollywood Jeff Petty. Good Lord, that's a big belt. <laughs> what? Oh, the, the the crown jewel championship on Cody. My God, look at this thing. Oh, my goodness. That <laughs> thing is huge. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the grill out. Um, yeah, Josh just pulled up a photo of Cody holding the crown jewel championship. And that thing, like, encompasses his whole shoulder yeah. and upper arm. It's huge. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it got, is. Okay, they got their rings. It, it, oh, what's what's the ring look like? Uh, See, this is live, ladies and gentlemen. You're getting this taped, but this is live. It, it's, it's a zoomed-in picture, so it's kind of crappy, but eh. it's kind of like a Super Bowl ring, basically. Yeah, it's 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 rather sizable. Yeah. So, okay, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's going to be it for the show. Yeah. Um, We talked about the PWI 250. 26 days. <laughs> if you're listening to this on Monday... 25 days? Yeah. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, 24 days? Yeah. 23, so on and so forth. Um, Yeah, yeah, that's a big belt. That's also, that's, that is a rather sizable ring, so they, they weren't kidding there. So, yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you Ooh. enjoyed the show, go like the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the grill out. The um, grill out. You can email us, the grill out 95 at gmail.com. Um, let us know what you think of the show. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What do you want us to change? Um, have you listened to to the Grill Out Hot Tag? We did an episode on the Muda scale. So, yeah. um, I know that is one thing that's like sort of. I guess is that really like considered underground a little bit for wrestling fans? Like, it's not something that's talked about often. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's a message board thing. I don't know, but we did a whole whole episode on it f- called the grail out hot tags not hot cakes <laughs> like we implied in the episode we were getting yeah. kind of hungry yeah i'm, I'm kind of uh, hungry right now yeah i'm getting there um again go like the facebook page facebook.com forward slash the grill out email us the grill out 95 at gmail.com hey if you know where uh tessa blanchard wrestled her 10 matches to qualify for the PWI 250, yeah, yeah. Uh, email us or send us a message. What are um, the rules? Yeah. Uh, if you run the PW, uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated <laughs> or you, you, you're a contributor to this, uh, explain to us why Tessa Blanchard and Tegan Knox were ranked so high. Yeah. Um, and where are these 10 matches? Yeah. I, want, I, I want to know where these 10 matches are. Okay. Yeah. Not 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 for any particular reason. Just that you know we got a, we got a fair playing field, okay? Because it, I know that we talked about it at the top of the previous segment about like yeah, why ten matches? Why so arbitrary with that in a way? I think this is why. I think this is why. And then they don't want. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't make any sense. If you know where they're at, just let us know. We would definitely like to look at uh, look into them. Um, I just want to see if they're if they're out there. Um, and uh, yeah, and it does suck that Tegan Knox and company did get uh, released. Um, releases always suck. 
No matter yeah. if it's in professional wrestling or if it's in the uh, the broadcast business. Um, uh, I'm a bit surprised about Baron. He wasn't released. His contract expired. But I'm a bit surprised they didn't want to like keep him on. I know. I wonder what he's going to do now. Yeah. Um, there was a meme going around. This is out in the show with this. There was a meme going around after Baron Corbin, uh, after he announced that he was not, you know, coming back to WWE, and it was the meme of the guy in the yellow suit walking around the corner, like rubbing his hands, <laughs> and it's like NXT wrestlers looking at a new finisher they're about to do. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so uh, get ready for everybody to start copying the end of days. Yeah. So. And that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Again, go like the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the grill out. Email us at the grill out 95 at gmail.com. And until next time, fellow wrestling fans, 26. have a good one.